Okay, being a, a seasoned teacher, um, when we first went to the one-to-one -one initiative, I was a little uncomfortable, but um, I enjoy embracing new things. And one of the, the things that I've tried to incorporate um, into the classroom is um, pretty much going paperless and having students um, submit assignments electronically and um, also um, having um, stations set up in, in the format that I don't necessarily have to cut and laminate and have all those pieces of paper that I, I did in the past. And um, I have found that it's a time saver as far as planning is concerned. I, um, I am able to just sit in one particular spot and organize um, all the materials I need for the lesson um, using technology. Uh, we are f currently working on a poetry unit and we are really working on developing our figurative language skills and trying to um, understand the meaning of poetry um, using evidence from the text and the meaning of the figurative devices. So today we had um, six stations and the station, um, station one was pretty much, um, I called it figurative fun with spinners. And the students were actually spinning one spinner to identify a figurative device and the second to get a um, topic. And they had to write, for example, if they were to spin metaphor and sports, they had to write a metaphor about sports and then um, explain the figurative and literal meaning of that particular statement. Um, at Station 2, they analyzed poetry and um, the students were able to actually listen to the song. They were using headphones. Um, they answered um, questions relating to the song, the theme of the, um, the poem or song, and they actually had a chance to create a new um, verse or stanza for the song. Um, our, the favorite station of the day seemed to be doing poet tweets and basically using those figurative devices to write and communicate um, a message um, in poetry just using the 140 characters and the students were actually, um, I had some scratch paper for them to work on but then they posted them to the Google Classroom and by the end of the day all four classes will be able to see the poet tweets that each class did. I did have one specific group that I worked with, um, just a, kind of a teacher-oriented station, and I worked with um, two students um, who um, were working on skills to better be able to compare poems. Um, then we had a station five, I called it collaborative poetry analysis, and basically it was like a mini uh, EOG assessment, but the students were able to collaborate with each other to uh, formulate their answers and support their answers with evidence from the text. And then um, I used Common Lit um, by um, selecting specific poems and with specific lexiles and assigning specific poems to specific students to meet the individual needs of the students. So you can see with this, you've got lots of things going on. And I simply chose Padlet because it's very user friendly and it's very quick and easy for me to organize my lessons and my stations. And um, there's a component, um, the way I have this pad set up, the students can actually just double click and a text box comes up and they can ask me a question. If, if I'm working with station four and they've got a question at station six, I can see the question and go over to them or they can still raise their hand. But it just opens up um, more time for me to be able to go from group to group and work with the groups or stay with a spe specific group and spend time with them. Uh, the greatest benefit, I think, is our time on task because um, the students immediately walked in, saw the agenda, they knew exactly where to go to, and every it, basically it gives us more time on task and it also gives, it provides more one-on-one um, -on -one time. I think it allows me to differentiate instruction more effectively and efficiently because it frees up me, um, I've kind of stepped out of the role from being the, at the front of the room and being the lecturer and more of a facilitator.